We are lucky in the 21st century because we can have access to views of the volcanoes. For example, this one in the Reckoning Peninsula, Iceland. Day and night. During the night, it seems is more active. This is around 6 o'clock today. This is the uh, latest Sundunka crater volcano. This is the crater K1. That is the name I've given. During the day, two hours later, we see it doesn't look as much as active although we see some lava glowing out. But when we look at the harmonic tremors for that time, this is the harmonic tremor for uh, measured in the Grindavik and the nearby town. And when we look at the six o'clock timeline, it is actually less active. That's the one which we thought is more active. That was during the dusk. It was a bit darker than the usual. And then uh, two hours later at eight o'clock, that's the one which we saw during the daylight is actually more active according to this chart. So why we see it as less active then? I think it's because of the ambient light. In the dark, everything glows, but in the daylight, it doesn't shine against the ambient light from the sun and from the daylight. Uh, something to be active must be like this. I have a separate video which shows and compares this heightened activity level in the K1 uh, volcano, comparing it with uh, before and after. I'll play this video after this so you can watch it also. For those who study the tremor chart of the latest eruption in the Reckonus Peninsula, this was something strange happening yesterday. You notice that uh, the 1 to 2 hertz frequency of the tremors suddenly shut up at around 4 o'clock and we saw the excess of the magma in the form of lava uh, overflowing, cascading down the rim of the uh, volcano. Then this continued to up to half past nine in the evening. And then we saw what happened next was interesting. The thermos chart suddenly plunged down the green line, one to two hertz frequency. And by nine, half past nine, it passed the uh, red uh, and blue tremors and this is what happened we had a rupture volcano cracked practically punctured itself the cauldron emptied into the surrounding areas and the lava was flowing toward the opposite direction of south toward the north toward the sword sengi fortunately uh, the eruption continued and repaired the crack and the wall a little bit of the lava moved toward the north, but didn't go far to reach the Sword Sengir Blue Lagoon Defense Force. And today we can see that the lava tube has returned. This is the lower part of spattering. That's the lava tube. The volcano is mainly erupting through there. It's highly active at the moment, but not overflowing in that sense. So, uh, but we see a lot of a scattering of the lava in all directions, south, north. Toward the Sundunka craters, you can see not on the back side. This is probably due to the deep source being uh, adding the uh, magma to the eruption site, creating a lot of wall collapses. Now, the lower source uh, or medium uh, source in the sourcing also contributing to that. And the land rise is now around three centimeters over the past uh, two, three weeks. As you can see in the Sword Sengi and the Skipatsky Heron um, GPS data. And we can see the mild level of the uplift in the yellow color around the Sword Sengi. This was around the time that the moon and the sun were in conjunction. That means the gravity of the moon and the sun are added together, practically pinching out through the flexure of the ground some magma, excess magma, into the surface probably.